It all began in 1899, when two brothers, James Ward and William Dowd Packard, formed the Packard Motor Car Company in Warren, Ohio. In 1903, a group of investors moved the company to Detroit, which was rapidly becoming the center of the burgeoning automobile industry. There, the company would thrive and develop a well-earned reputation for quality and luxury. Car buyers and competing manufacturers recognized Packard automobiles for their excellence in engineering and styling. And the familiar phrase, ask the man who owns one, became the Packard advertising slogan for most of the company's history. Packard inventions, such as the steering wheel and automatic spark advance, were quickly adopted by other manufacturers. As Packard's reputation grew, it became apparent that a state-of-the-art testing facility was needed to ensure the company's leadership role in an increasingly competitive industry. In 1925, Packard officials began purchasing farmland for the construction of their proving grounds. They selected a rural site about 20 miles north of Detroit. This area would eventually become the community of Shelby Township. Packard spared no expense in the construction of the proving grounds and hired the famous architect Albert Kahn to design and supervise its construction. Twenty years earlier, in 1905, Kahn revolutionized the design of industrial buildings by using reinforced concrete in the construction of Building No. 10 at the Packard Manufacturing Complex in Detroit, a building technique that is still used today. The Packard Proving Grounds were dedicated in the fall of 1927. By 1930, the company had invested over $1 million in the facility. The Packard Proving Grounds were designed to ensure that Packard automobiles retained their long-standing reputation for quality and reliability. The main building of the Proving Grounds is the Packard Gate Lodge. This Cotswold Tudor revival-style building served as the residence for the manager and his family. It features three fireplaces, nine bedrooms, four bathrooms, hardwood floors, and a multicolored slate roof. An attached garage and carport provided room for 10 cars, while a dormitory above the garage area served as living space for test drivers and engineers. Comfortable accommodations were available for visiting executives, clients, and dignitaries. Across from the lodge stands a 6,500 square foot repair garage where Packard engineers performed repairs, vehicle maintenance, and engineering tests. This building was constructed in 1929 and was also designed by Albert Kahn. The entrance boulevard, which is shaped like the famous Packard grill, led to magnificent wrought iron gates. These gates opened onto the lavishly landscaped grounds, rich with flowering trees, roses, and other ornamental landscaping, in keeping with Packard's sterling reputation for elegance and perfection. At the proving grounds, test drivers and engineers thoroughly tested any new design or feature before mass production. Packard also randomly selected vehicles from the production line and sent them to the proving grounds for an operational evaluation and review of workmanship. Packard's drivers and engineers used the latest, most technologically advanced equipment available to test their automobiles. Some testing methods were less sophisticated than others, but all demonstrated the durability of Packard motor cars. Miles of grueling off-pavement test roads crisscrossed the site and were dotted with hills, curves, bumps, gravel and dirt, deep sand, and water pits. All were designed to ensure that Packard buyers were receiving a high quality, thoroughly tested motor car that would perform well in any conceivable road condition. The weather extremes of Michigan's four seasons added to the already challenging testing conditions. In contrast to the rugged test roads, the exceptionally smooth 2.5-mile oval concrete track was built to exacting tolerances. Drivers could travel around the banked curves in excess of 100 miles per hour without holding the steering wheel. 
The Packard test track soon gained a reputation as one of the world's fastest tracks. Before it was even completed, Indianapolis 500 race car driver Leon Dure set a world land speed record of 148.7 miles per hour. This feat was accomplished on June 14, 1928, just two weeks after Dure won the Indy 500 with his Miller race car. DeRay's speed record on the Packard test track would stand until the early 1950s. In addition to testing its automobiles, Packard also used the proving grounds for the development and testing of its DR980 radial diesel airplane engine. In the 300-acre track infield, the company constructed a runway that led to a 4,000-square-foot steel airplane hangar near the north end of the track. Famed aviator Colonel Charles Lindbergh visited the site twice in 1929 to test fly an airplane powered by Packard's DR-980. Here is Colonel Lindbergh with Packard President Alvin McCauley. In May 1931, pilots Walter Lees and Fred Brossi set a world flight endurance record of 84 hours and 33 minutes with a Packard-powered Balanca. This was a record that would stand until 1986. Packard was proud of the Proving Grounds and used it as a backdrop for many of its advertising campaigns, like this example in Fortune magazine in the early 1930s. This advertisement speaks of the Packard You Will Never See, a production auto that has been consigned to a tortuous existence as a test car at the Proving Grounds, all in the interests of building a high-quality motor car. The practice of using the site for advertising continued into the 1950s. Now look to, look to, look to, look to Packard. Look to Packard for built-in quality and proved performance. The new Packard V8 engine delivers more driving force to the rear wheels than any other engine. It's America's easiest handling, safest riding car. Your Packard dealer invites you to see and drive the greatest Packard of them all. Packard for 1956. In addition to advertising, the site was used for dealer shows and demonstrations for the Packard dealer network from across the United States and around the world. During World War II, Chrysler Defense Engineering leased the Proving Grounds to test tanks and other armored vehicles. Testing and repairs to prototype tanks outgrew the repair garage and hangar. So architect William Edward Capp was hired by the War Department and Chrysler to design a new garage building. This wartime building was constructed to the west of the original Packard repair garage and was ready for use in 1944. After the war, Packard resumed automotive testing at the site. The company converted the new tank garage into an experimental and engineering laboratory. The lab contained a special climate room that allowed engineers to test engines, chassis, and electrical components, as well as fuels and lubricants under conditions of extreme heat and cold. By October 1954, the company's fortunes were on the decline and in an attempt to survive in a market dominated by the big three automakers, Packard purchased and merged with Studebaker. Meanwhile, at the Proving Grounds, test drivers and engineers conducted a durability run with a 1955 Packard Patrician to test the vehicle and its components while demonstrating the power and endurance of the company's new overhead valve V8 engine. For seven days, the car was driven continuously around the track, 24 hours a day. The vehicle stopped only for fuel, tires, driver changes, and minor maintenance. When the durability run was over, the drivers had taken the Patrician 25,000 miles around the track, or an amazing 10,000 laps at an average speed of 104.7 miles per hour. Despite ongoing efforts at the Packard Proving Grounds, a number of factors began to put the future of Studebaker Packard in doubt. During the 1950s, fierce competition between Detroit's Big Three left smaller independents with rising production costs and dwindling market shares. 
By 1956, the Studebaker Packard Corporation was in serious financial difficulty. Under the terms of a management deal and financial bailout with aircraft engine manufacturer Curtis Wright, the Packard Proving Grounds were shut down after millions of miles of testing, all without a serious injury or fatality. The Packard plant on East Grand Boulevard was also shut down as manufacturing operations were consolidated at Studebaker's headquarters in South Bend, Indiana. Two years later, the Packard name was phased out and faded into automotive history. The Ford Motor Company purchased the Proving Ground facility in 1961. A portion was used to produce automotive trim parts and for parts storage. Little else would be done to the rest of the facility over the next 35 years. By the mid-1990s, Mother Nature took over. Trees and other vegetation began to engulf the site, obscuring the gate lodge from view. For decades, the proving grounds waited for rediscovery. Thanks to the efforts of Hillary Davis and the rest of the Shelby Township Historical Committee, a new century brought a renewed interest in the historical significance of this site. Well, it started uh, when the United States Postal Service wanted to put in a distribution center in the north part of the test track. And uh, it would have meant demolishing the hangar to start and also demolishing the north part of the test track. And the community, the citizens in the community, did not want the Postal Distribution Center because it would have meant increased traffic and, and other, other reasons. So uh, they protested and things happened. The State Historic Preservation Office got wind of what was happening. Um, they looked at the hangar and said it was a gem and rare and they put a stop to the uh, plans for the distribution center pending uh, Section 106 review. And they, that happened, and as they say, the rest is history. The year 2002 would mark a rebirth and a new beginning for the Packard Proving Grounds. After two years of negotiations, a deal was announced on June 9th by Ford Motor Land Development Corporation, the Packard Motor Car Foundation, and Shelby Township. Well, receiving the keys from Ford Land in June of 2002 was really a bench water mark for us here at the Proving Grounds because we were able to finally take possession of the site. Work began on a new master plan for the nearly 14 acres that contains most of the buildings and a small portion of the test track. The Museum of Automotive Testing will tell the story of the site and its unique role in automotive testing and development. The combined exhibit space and full service banquet facility will be available to the public for meetings, luncheons and other special events. The Arsenal of Democracy Museum will tell the story of the automotive industry's role in World War II, the greatest conversion from private enterprise to wartime production that has ever occurred in this country. It's an important story of courage and sacrifice that needs to be told to future generations. Well, certainly the master plan for the site continues to evolve as the site evolves. And uh, we have visions for five to 10 years from now with uh, it being open on a daily basis, an arsenal of democracy museum in either the repair garage or the engineering building. Uh, we were fortunate enough a couple of years ago to obtain one of the original Packard factory door openings, which uh, was the employee entrance and is a famous door opening, which we hope to reconstruct as part of probably the only major new construction we will do, which will be between the engineering building and the repair garage and we hope to put that 52-piece limestone edifice back into the uh, repair garage so that you will actually have the feel that you're going into the old Packard factory offices on East Grand Boulevard. We will reconstruct that door opening. This new construction will actually join the engineering building with the re repair garage, which are now separate. And uh, in earlier days when 
Ford Motor had the property. They did join it with a metal building, but we hope to join it with uh, kind of an atrium style building that'll include a gift shop and welcome center and visitor center. And then that will be kind of the focal point for people then going to other parts of the site. In order to accomplish these goals, the Packard Motor Car Foundation took on the daunting task of restoring the buildings after decades of neglect. A volunteer work crew quickly set to work removing the overgrowth. This work restored the gate lodge to the view of thousands of motorists who use Van Dyke every day. Many township residents pointed out that they never knew the lodge was there. Well, the lodge garage doors took extensive restoration work. There were eight pairs of doors that had to be removed, had to be completely restored. On the bottoms of some of the lodge garage doors, we had some, some rotting, and we were able to sort of dovetail uh, new pieces of wood into that and use some wood fillers here and there to keep the original look of the doors and use as much of the original lumber as possible. Being on the National Register, we have to pay particular attention to detail on exterior renovations, and the lodge garage doors are in so many famous photographs, we had to be true to the doors and do an exact restoration. The front patio, as, as you come into the lodge that faces the south, was a, a local Boy Scout project to completely remove the field stone and restore the front porch area to its original appearance back in 1928. The chimneys presented kind of a, a special problem for us because of the clinker style brick, they called it, which was well known on projects back in the 1920s and 30s when they would build these Tudor Revival or, or Cotswold style cottage designs. And uh, we had to obtain the clinker brick from a place in Indiana. The masons that we hired had to reconstruct the top several feet of each chimney and put new chimney pots on the top. So those had to be done to exacting standards as well and we were able, to, fortunately, to find some very good matches with the brick and uh, it's worked out very well. We worked from photographs on the exterior lights to reproduce them to, once again, very exacting standards and as close as possible to the originals. Fortunately, we had original period photographs that we were able to use for measurements and scaling the, the exterior lights to the original specifications. Another important project was the painting of the elevated water storage tank in Packard Green. Crews worked to restore the Packard Proving Grounds logo to the elevated water storage tank for the first time since the 1950s. The only building not on the Packard Motor Car Foundation site was the aviation hangar one of the very few structures of its type to survive unmodified from the 1920s. In order to save it, the hangar had to be moved. Professional building movers were brought in to accomplish the task. The hangar was heavily braced, lifted from its slab, and moved almost a mile to the foundation's parcel. It was a tight fit past the timing stand, but once on the site, the hangar was placed on its new footings and anchored down. Restoration of a rare piece of aviation history will continue along with the other buildings on the site. But before the buildings could be refurbished and restored, they had to be made weather tight once again. Roof repairs were begun on the major buildings of the site, like this section of flat roofing on the north end of the lodge. A crew of volunteers also worked on the roof on the original wooden powerhouse much to the dismay of the squatters that had to find other living quarters. The power station was really the first building on the site. It was constructed and uh, ready for use in 1927 to allow power for construction purposes of the lodge and other structures at the site. It was really in pretty rough shape in terms of its wooden foundation had crumbled and through volunteer help we have reconstructed the foundation, had it painted, replaced siding where we needed to, new windows will be going in the building and a, and a new door constructed to original specifications. After several years of minimal or no maintenance, the roof of the Packard Repair Garage was in critical need of rehabilitation. The roof in the former dynamometer room had several serious leaks and its support structure had deteriorated. 
a professional commercial roofing crew set to work rebuilding the roof surfaces on the experimental and engineering lab, which included replacement of deteriorated decking. Once all structural repairs were made, a new coal tar roofing surface was installed. Well, the engineering building, aside from having a completely new roof, the major issue there was restoring the 12-foot high windows that wrap around it in the original Philippine mahogany and they were basically built in place and being that they were, it was during the World War II there are no steel frame windows they had to be wood and uh, we have reconstructed the windows to exacting standards just as they were originally. Efforts got underway to re-roof this small carriage style garage to the north of the repair garage and experimental lab. The old layers of roofing were stripped off, new decking applied, and a new shingle surface installed. Shortly after the lodge opened, the carriage garage was constructed. It was a structure that was in pretty good shape. It's been re-roofed, but it, the structure was also leaning forward, and we had to straighten the structure structurally, first of all, and then later replace with exact duplicates the correct barn-style doors that are on the front of the carriage garage and we also had to replace the windows. With the roofs restored, work began on mortar repair and external painting of the buildings. Well, we've done extensive exterior maintenance and all the painted surfaces and all the trim, whether it's in the cream color as original or with the green trim on the engineering building or the chocolate brown trim on the lodge and the repair garage, all of that has been repaired fixed, caulked, primed, and painted in as close to original colors as we can determine. For the past five or six years, we've been having uh, young either uh, senior high school students or college students coming in uh, in paid positions and assisting us with summer maintenance. We have just shy of a 14-acre site, and uh, the exterior and the grounds really need to be kept up. Uh, originally, the Packard Proving Grounds was a show place in terms of its uh, exterior maintenance and the grounds, and we wanted to maintain that look. The Elms of Honor was a very successful project that was undertaken in the spring of 2005. Participants in the program donated a Princeton elm tree to the Packard Proving Grounds, which allowed the restoration of the elegant elms that once lined the parkway. The original elm trees at the Packard Proving Grounds fell victim to the Dutch elm disease and were removed from the site some time ago. Through the Elms of Honor program, the original tree locations were identified and Princeton elms planted in those exact original locations. The Princeton elms have a high resistance to Dutch elm disease and allowed a recreation of the national historic landscape the Packard Proving Grounds represents. The timing stand located at the edge of the two and a half mile high speed oval track was built in kind of the pagoda style of the Kentucky racehorses and has an upper and lower level. The lower level was primarily timing equipment and other electronic equipment where the upper level was open with the columns around it to allow people to stand up there with handheld timing devices and binoculars and track various tests that were going on on the track. The roof had shifted, it needed to be re-roofed with the proper cedar shakes of the proper thickness. Parts of the sides of the timing stand needed to be redone and had to be reconstructed with proper siding. Electrical had to be restored to the building. And at this point, the timing stand, exterior-wise, is complete on the restoration, and we're now working on the interior. The work is being accomplished with volunteer help when possible, but many operations require professional help. Well, originally at the Packard Proving Grounds, it was a self-contained system in terms of its water supply. It had a well, it had an elevated water storage tank that you, that you sort of famously see, see with the Packard logo on it. And we had to bring in city water and sewer to the site at considerable expense. It was necessary to regenerate everything at the site in terms of fire suppression, water to the lodge, so that we could repower restrooms and the hot water heating system. So really having water and sewer on the site was one of the key early things that we needed to do and spend the money to do it. Other skilled trades such as electrical upgrades, plaster repair, and wood and glass restoration 
and new landscaping will also require funding. But we've come too far to stop or even slow down. Public interest and support from both near and far is the key to our continued momentum. The historic significance of the Packard Proving Grounds was recognized in 2000 when the site was determined to be eligible for listing on the prestigious National Register of Historic Places. It's prestigious to be listed on the National Register of Historic Places because it puts the resource up there with Mount Vernon and uh, the Statue of Liberty and other national treasures. It also makes the community aware of the historic resource and the importance of it and it may also set the stage for other historic resources to be saved in the community. It also provides um, opportunities for tax credits and funding for grants. Well, when we dedicated our National Register plaques, it was a well-attended ceremony. It was a major event for the site to be placed on the National Register. All 13.8 acres are on the register, and we obtained additional bronze plaques that will be placed throughout the site that will remind people that it is on the National Register. In May of 2003, Ford Land, the Packard Motor Car Foundation, and Shelby Township were recognized by Michigan Governor Jennifer Granholm with one of the first five Governor's Awards for Historic Preservation. In October of 2003, the Packard Motor Car Foundation held a public open house at the Proving Grounds. Members of Motor City Packards, the Michigan region of Packard Automobile Classics, were invited, and the event was publicized in local newspapers. Organizers hoped for a turnout of between 80 and 100 people. They weren't ready for the estimated 800 visitors that dropped by for a tour that day. This tremendous turnout illustrates the amount of local interest in this historic site. Well, the open houses have continued to grow since we first had them. The most recent ones, in fact, one in uh, April of 2009 brought in over 2,300 people. And we have a very dedicated group of volunteers that are in charge of these open houses and are very well organized. And they continue to grow and they continue to be an event now that the community feels a part of and they actually look forward to them. You'll see people around town and they'll ask when the next open house is. So we're very lucky to be able to have these open houses twice a year and have attendance continue to, to build. In October of 2004, the site's new flagpole was dedicated. The 60-foot pole was a gift to the Packard Proving Grounds from the Shelby Macomb Daybreakers Kiwanis Club. The dedication ceremony was conducted by members of the Old Settlers VFW Post of Shelby Township. A Shelby Township resident donated a 12-foot by 18-foot U.S. flag that is flown with pride at the site. In 2005, the state of Michigan recognized the Packard Proving Grounds as a registered state historical site. The dedication ceremony for the state historical marker took place in August and was attended by over 100 people. Two former Packard employees performed the unveiling, Fred Schulwitz, who worked at both the downtown plant and the Proving Grounds, and Carl Altz, former test driver at the Proving Grounds from 1934 to 1956. This recognition further validates the tremendous effort undertaken by the Packard Motor Car Foundation and scores of volunteers who are determined to bring this site back to life. Well, the event here is the first annual Cars or Stars, or an event at the historic Packard Proving Grounds in Shelby Township, Michigan. And it's been very, very successful. We have way over 200 cars here. And one of the neat things, we have a big variety of cars. There's a little bit of everything. That's the way we planned it. We have a committee that's been working for the last six months to make this thing a success. And any proceeds are going to benefit the restoration of the Proving Grounds. This is a great example of some of the things that can happen here at the Proving Ground and how it can be utilized to benefit the community. Uh, everybody seems to be just sitting and having fun today, talking cars, looking at cars. They've got a swap meet, a little bit of everything. We've got great music. It's just a great, fun, all-American day.
Over 80 years ago, the Packard Proving Grounds was established to test and evaluate Packard automobiles. Today, as it prepares to take on its important new role, the Packard Motor Car Foundation is counting on your support. Your donations, large and small, will help us continue our efforts so that new generations can learn of Packard's proud contribution to the automobile industry. And just as important, the Arsenal of Democracy Museum will ensure that the effort and sacrifice made in World War II by the greatest generation this country has ever known will never be forgotten. This is Edward Herman. Please consider a donation today.